have to own more shares to have more ownership, right? So it's, it's equal units. It's like having dollars instead of saying that I own 30% of a farm, you know, like, you know, you have, you have tangible, you have things that you can have in units, uh, standard units. <laughs> so, so that means that you have retained earnings. The owner investments are the issuance, the, the initial issuance of the pri of the stocks. That's when money came into the business from the stocks being sold from the business, not on the stock exchange, but from the business itself. And then the draws are dividends. Draws are kind of the sticker, the messy situation in a corporation, because in a corporation, you can't just have one person say, I want to draw some money out. Uh, you have to have dividends, which are going to be equally distributed to all the shares because you have to have all the shares being equal. So you can't have like one partner drawing money out the way you might be able to have in a partnership. You have to basically say, if there's gonna be a dividend, everyone has to agree to it and you have to think about it. So that's what the messy side of the corporation is. So pros and cons there. All right, so then if we go to the income statement, the income statement fits into the balance sheet. Remember the balance sheet is the double entry accounting system. How does the income statement fit into it? Because there's the net income. The net income is part of the equity section. We break it out on the balance sheet as a timing statement. So this is the primary tool that you'll need to like report taxes, for example, if you're in the United States, because the United States has an income tax, which taxes based on your performance when you earn the income. So that's gonna of course have the income up top, which we have generated primarily through uh, deposits that have come in through the bank feed, increase in the checking account, the other side going to these income accounts and then the cost of goods sold would only be there if you are selling inventory, which we already talked about, causes problems, inventory does, forcing us to deviate from like a cash-based system oftentimes. And then we've got all the expenses, which primarily, again, we have created through the decreases in uh, the checking account. The other side go into our various expenses and we basically constructed our expense categories as we've we've had those ex as we've seen those expenses come through we had other income and expenses down below and then of course the bottom line is net income 5855017 which ties out to what's on the balance sheet here let's take a look at just some of the other reports just quickly i'm going to duplicate this and just take a quick look at some of the other reports uh, that are being generated as we as we do our bank feeds accounting drop down reports so uh we have our favorites up top all the reports financial analysis these are some snap these are kind of some fancy reports the snapshot the short-term cash flow i'll let you the manage the budget summary so i'll let you take a look on those uh on your on your own but let's go down here to starting with the financial reports we looked at the balance sheet uh, we've got uh, depreciation schedules, which would be dependent upon whether or not you're going to be calculating depreciation in zero or not. If you're in the United States, like I say, uh, you're going to have to do depreciation for taxes on a tax basis. So you're going to have to put it into the tax software anyways. That's why a lot of times in the United States, you might just use the tax software as your subsidiary ledger for both tax depreciation and book depreciation. If you don't have that obligation or you'd like to track your own depreciation uh, in the software as well, then, then you can track, then you can use that method. Disposal schedule, fixed asset uh, reconciliation, the income statement, the management report.